Well, the ACC Network welcomes you to the PNC Arena in Raleigh, North Carolina. A couple teams on the rise. Postseason aspirations as 2019 winds to a close. The Wolfpack of NC State. Well, they welcome the Mountaineers of Appalachian State. Matchup of two elite guards, Justin Forrest and Markel Johnson. Should be a good one here before the conference schedule gets underway. Welcome inside the arena along with Paul Biancardi, Will Fleming. And Paul, look, this is the last game before each team takes the deep dive into conference play. How important is it for each team to finish strong? Oh, it's very important. NC State at won four of the last five before the break. App State four or four before the break. So that should have the attention of the Wolfpack. We will see today one of the great guards in the ACC, and he is coming off the best game of his career. What has made Markel Johnson so great? Well, he's a triple-double type of player. He can score the ball, he can drive it, and he can pass it. This guy has great end-to-end -end speed. The deep ball is there. The push in the open floor. The ability to find his teammate. I love the way he navigates in ball screens, gets to the rim, and can finish. The ability to post big numbers and be big time at crunch time. He works on both ends of the floor. Johnson, the triple-double, that is a big part of Kevin Keats' programs. And Paul, he is not alone. He's got a lot of help in the backcourt. Well, Devin Daniels is an X factor in my mind. Plays the game downhill. Plays the type of basketball that Kevin Keats wants. It's up and down without the whistle. And Jericho Helms, in his last five games, only shooting 50% from distance. Guy has an incredible shot fake game as well. It's going to be important tonight. Kevin Keats, his offense is always humming. No different this year. Right at the top of the ACC in just about every important category. Points, field goals. They will always shoot the three-pointer. And they've done a really nice job from the free throw line. Kevin Keats wants to play the game without whistles. The pace wants to be fast and possessions high. Now, we talk about the weapons that Markel Johnson has alongside. NC State surprising. Late news today, Paul. They are without C.J. Bryce, their leading scorer, their leading rebounder. What impact does that have on this game? Well, that has a big impact, but the next guy up for NC State is going to be Braxton Beverly, one of their best three-point shooters. They're going to miss the experience of C.J. Bryce in this game. I know you think this is a game all about tempo and pace for the Mountain. They've got a couple dynamic scores. They'll lean on these two to really get it done today. Yeah, Justin Forrest is outstanding, and Isaac Johnson, the big man, can score in the paint and at the rim. This guy's fun to watch, Justin Forrest. Fierce competitor, has a special knack of getting to the free throw line, and Isaac Johnson, I call him the board crasher, gets nine a game for 17 points. It's a strong one-two punch. Series history. The NC State has won 12 of the 13. It's not every year these two get together, but I guess it shouldn't come as a big surprise that the Wolfpack have handled the Mountaineers in the history of this series. Well, NC State's going to win this game with their offense. 82 points a game, top 20 in the country. That's number two in the ACC. They have to score points before the defense of Appalachian State gets back. That's going to be very important for the Wolfpack. Now Kevin Keats is the head man here, and his style is pretty clear. He brought it from UNC Wilmington. They run, they gun, they pressure, they defend, and it has been a perfect fit here in Raleigh. Meantime, I think way ahead of schedule, Dustin Kearns in his first year, he came from Presbyterian in two years. He took them from a five-win team to 20 wins, and he's really got this team buying in, particularly Paul, on the defensive end. Yeah, this is their best start since 2006, 2007, and 8 and 4. Dustin Kearns is a program builder at Presbyterian now at Appalachian State. So just about an hour ago, we heard that there would be no C.J. Bryce. And on paper, that's a huge loss for NC State. All eyes on number one in black. Justin Forrest, their leading scorer, and Markel Johnson, and he are going to go toe-to-toe -to -toe today and in the circle, Hunter Seacat and Manny Bates. Underway, and what do you know? An immediate touch for Markel Johnson. And for the Mountaineers, it's all about defense. They're top 20 in the nation at giving up points. Scoring defense, 62 points per game. That's tops in the Sun Belt. They, they want to play within the speed limit. NC State wants to... Maybe get a speeding ticket or two in this game. 
Andre tries a three, no good. It's interesting. Dustin Kearns, the protege of Mike Young at Wofford, he sends these five onto the floor. It, you would have thought when he was brought on that they would be all about shooting the three-pointer and just having guys who can shoot it at all five spots. This is the first look inside for Isaac Johnson, but he adapted, Paul, to this group, this personnel, and they focus on defense, not the offensive end. And, and it's the pack line defense. That's a big rejection on the back end from Hunter Seacat on cue. Good D for App State. Five for Kevin Keats and NC State. And what a finish for Adrian Delf. Adrian Delf. Adrian Delf is a terrific athlete, strong body, and the team's best on-ball defender. In some ways, this is kind of a classic matchup. Strength on strength, a trap and a held ball as Braxton Beverly put it on the deck. Arrow to Appalachian State. But look, NC State looks to score it. Appalachian State has held eight opponents under 65. They are in the top 40 in just about every important defensive category, so it's strength on strength. And when you talk about numbers, Will, Appalachian State has not given up over 80 points in any of their games. And NC State averaging 82. The pace and the tempo of this game will be vital. Yeah, and speaking of numbers, that is turnover number one for App State. We just, I thought we were impressed with Dustin Kearns, his message to his team at shoot around. And, and he, that man said to his group, look, I'm supremely confident we will defend. What we can't do is leave here saying we gave him 20 or 30 points out of our offense. Well, it's about limiting turnovers and limiting points from turnovers. When you think about it, turnovers are empty possessions. But points from turnovers can cost you a game. You don't want to let your offense lead to the opponent's offense without any defense. Right, Daniels gets the first two for NC State to tie the game. He's been just about the best bench scorer in the ACC. And this first look at the full court pressure. And it's, it's a 2-2-1. Two, two, Zone press, they like to run and jump, which which means they want to put two on the ball, try to trap it when the ball handler has his back turned to the action. App State does not have a pure point guard. They have made Justin Forrest play the one. He made that change in the preseason. He has taken to that. Here he is trying a three. And the, the stat stuffer Johnson comes down with it. And you see the Mountaineers not really attacking the offensive glass. For them, it's all about defensive transition, getting back and getting set. And Bates first look in the post. Corner three and a foul. Isaac Johnson going to be called for kicking out the feet after the shot. So, Paul, that interests me, the fact that they make almost no attempt at offensive rebounds. Does, from a strategy standpoint, does that surprise you, or does it make sense to just get back and prevent transition chances? Most teams that play the pack line defense, and that's what Dustin Kearns has implemented this year for App State, it, it is to give up the offensive rebound to get back and not give up easy points in transition. When you think about it, you know, Tony Bennett's father, Dick Bennett, one of the masters at the pack line defense, and that's the way Virginia likes to play. Chris Mack plays that way at Louisville, a lot of other teams throughout the country, but the idea of getting back, not giving up easy points in transition, points off of turnovers, you can't defend those points but you can defend the team five on five. Kevin Keats got the candy cane look coming a few days after Christmas. He's a stylish man on the sideline. Daniels, two in traffic. Keats got the NC State tie going. Or is it shirt? Shirt, I'm sorry. Looks like a tie from here. Santa Claus was good to him. <laughs> His stocking was stuffed. Here is a three point try for O'Shawn Williams. And an offensive board for Johnson. Now, the one thing about the offensive rebound for the Mountaineers, if they're going to take long three-point shots, they're going to hang around for long rebounds, but they're not going to try to offensive rebound at the rim. See, they're all getting back when the shot goes up. That's been the formula. Defend the half court. Johnson. Beverly had some back spasms, just played a few minutes against the Citadel. They say he would have probably continued in that game had it been a big game and very nice down the tree to give NC State a five-point lead. When you're defending Braxton Beverly, you must understand that 
70% of his shots are coming from three, so you can't leave him, you can't help off of him, you can't dig it out of the post, you can't double down. He's too good of a shooter. He's made eight of his last 12 threes. Four is going to work, and he is fouled on the floor. It's interesting, when you talk about Dustin Kearns, Braxton Beverly is his kind of player. That's the kind of guy that has made Wofford so successful. That is the kind of player that he hopes to recruit at App State. They just don't have that personnel this year, but you could expect if he's around long enough, that's how much of a coach on the rise he is. Beverly sort of fits the mold for this guy. When you look at Justin Kearns, he's going to recruit shooters. All five guys for his team. He wants them to be able to shoot the ball just like that. He wants to do that at all five positions. That's what they had at Wofford. That's what he was building at Presbyterian. Good start for Delphi's made his first two. And still has to from deep. <laughs> Braxton Beverly. Scouting report says he's made seven of his last 11 three-point shots coming into this game. He's got to fail you. You've got to put your body on his body and get a hand up. Forrest so active. He's bumped by Daniels. Hot shooting for both teams to start. NC State with an early six-point lead at home just after the holidays. All right, Markel, let's run the fast break. When you're growing up, what chore did you dislike the most? Uh, washing dishes. What's your best sport outside of basketball? Baseball. If you could play pro baseball, pro basketball, what would you choose? Pro baseball. Why? I just, I, I just love baseball. Man after my own heart, a baseball lover, and with the two feeds to Braxton Beverly, now alone in fourth place all time in the Wolfpack assist list. So Markel Johnson. We'd have to stay another four years to catch Chris Cocciani, and there's no Rodney Monroe on this team, but there's some very good outside shooters and scorers. NC State has made three of the first six shots. That's surprising, given how good App State has been. Do go after, as you say, the offensive rebounds on the glass. It looked like it might have gone off DJ Funderburk, but NC State basketball. Tomorrow on the ACC Network, Yale will take on North Carolina at the Dean Smith Center. And then six times, last in 1988, heels one each time. Seven Eastern right here on ACCN and the ESPN app. A giveaway for the Wolfpack. It has not been a great few weeks for Roy Williams in North Carolina. They have really been in a tailspin as Justin Forrest gets on the score sheet. Forrest. Justin Forrest loves to play downhill. He's coming at you with speed. He's aggressive. A good decision maker. He can find the rim very easily. I love the way he has that special knack to just create fouls once he's in the paint. Thunderbird going to work on the post. And the staff told me in practice yesterday that Thunderbird has played well for them, but they're waiting for that one breakout game, a game where he can get double-figure points, double-figure rebounds, you know, a handful of blocks and really be a factor. He's going he's gonna to have a chance tonight and for the rest of the ACC. He was suspended indefinitely earlier this season, Kevin Keats, for undisclosed reasons. They go into the post to James Lewis. Redshirt sophomore has it swatted away. Third NC State block. Johnson probing. Daniels. Short. How many times has NC State already gotten hands on passes? Well, they look to get 40 deflections per game. That's the goal for Kevin Keats. They're well on pace for that. Johnson bounces to Funderburg and a kick ball. Look at the defense by DJ Funderburg. Zero on the way. Hands straight up. Doesn't leave his feet, but he does come down with his hands. He's lucky he didn't get a foul on that. Last shot attempt, but for the first few seconds of that defensive possession, he had great patience. Yeah, Dustin Curran said to us, with the way NC State plays, they get called for some fouls. He thinks they should be called for some more. Well, at times, NC State can be a little handsy, if you will. You know, a hand there. Well, part of the package well, is almost another giveaway. Lewis. You know, they're, they're slapping at the ball. They're trying to tap from behind. They're getting deflections. And the opposing coach can sometimes think that those should be fouls, but 
That's the aggressive pressing nature that Kevin Keats has brought to this program. He has really electrified this program, not just in wins, but the fan base as well. well. It's a style that's easy to root for. Each of the first two years at the helm, the team has scored more than 80 points. The super freshman, Donovan Gregory, comes off the bench. He wears 11 in black as Johnson goes to the bench. Donovan Gregory from Charlotte is, by most accounts, the highest rated recruit that App State has ever had. And he gets an immediate touch. Not shy down the lane. Forrest draws more contact, and that is such a big part of his game. Well, that's what he does best. He's special because he can create contact, finish with explosion or body control. That time he couldn't finish that play, but he gets to the line so often. And look at that body. It's... It, it, it's built for 40 minutes. We chatted with him this morning. He was so impressive. It's the first. He was not allowed to start three games ago against St. Andrews. We're trying to send a message with Dustin Kearns. Of what does he do in response? The next two nights out, he averages 29 points. He's the mid-major player of the week in the country. And really led his team to two road conference wins. I love the response by Justin Forrest. He said, look, the message was not personal. It was about my play, and I learned from it, and I moved on. How about when I asked him, what made you so good last week? He said, without hesitating, my team. Yeah, there's no entitlement with this Mountaineers team. All these guys really like each other off the court. And it really shows watching them on film and just in a few minutes here this afternoon. Forrest attacks again. For wild and out of control. Jericho Hellums down the lane. He is bumped. That is on the floor. Hellums against Wake Forest three games ago. A really nasty collision. He was taken off the court on the stretcher. And he was able to play the next game. He's a tough kid, but for a couple games, he was just not himself. Five points between those two, but against the Citadel last time out. Looked more like the old Jericho Hellums with 13 as Thunderbird slams it over. Well, Helms is a really good shooter, but he needs to get off to a quick start for him to have a good game. Watching him in high school, he had breakout performances at the Peach Jam, which is one of the most prestigious high school summer events. And that's where he caught the eye of a lot of high majors and Kevin Keats. He was getting recruited by the mid-majors, but his jump shot was so good over a five-day period. Kevin Keats got himself a really good player. Yeah, he came from Chaminade in St. Louis, which is, of course, a great high school program. As another steal for App State. And Adeline goes down off the window for oh, Sean Williams. Hellums, in the history of that Chaminade program, tra trails only two guys on the all-time scoring list. That would be Bradley Beal and Jason Tatum. Some good company. Here he is, down the lane. Looked like he might have lowered the shoulder, but he'll go to the line when we come back. DJ Funderburk, an inside presence for the Wolfpack. That time, punching it home. Kevin Keats and NC State will enter into ACC play full board on Tuesday. Three good ones. Undefeated Boston College goes into Cameron where they've never won. And the 20-game schedule, which is a new wrinkle in the ACC, is going to be a big part of the narrative, Paul, going into the new year 2020. Well, you failed to mention that BC is undefeated right now in the ACC. 2-0. Sort of a surprise early on. They've done a really nice job. With so many upsets in college basketball. Um, just having 20 games, though, in your conference, it's a grind for the coaches, but it's also terrific opportunities to, to win games to make the NCAA tournament. You know, you need quality wins when you're in the ACC. That's not the best ACC year that we've seen, but there's still quality wins. These coaches watched the Big Ten do it last year, and what happens? You get more quad one and two opportunities, both home and on the road, and, and the Big Ten loaded up the NCAA field a year ago. And Kevin Keats, you know, they were maybe one or two wins away from making the NCAA tournament last year. That has really 
I think, stuck in the soul of Coach Keats and, and these returning players that they didn't make it last year and they thought they had a good enough team and a good enough schedule. That is Mike Bibby's son off the bench for the miss. You know, they were 33 in the net rating. Did not get in. Much higher in that area than a lot of teams that did. One thing about it, that the out-of-conference schedule for NC State was not nearly good enough. It's another throwaway by Daniels looking for Johnson, their fourth turnover for NC State. This year, on the schedule, they've been better, Paul, but they've not won any of those games. They lost at the Auburn, they lost to Memphis, and so right now, Joe Lenardi has the Wolfpack again out of the field, heading in, into ACC play. Well, to be out in December is okay. You don't want to be out the first week in March when you have to play your way in. But I don't think Memphis loot loss and Auburn loss really hurts. Obviously, great opportunities, but a good win against Wisconsin, and I think a really good win against UNC Greensboro, who I think will have a great chance to be in the postseason, whether it's the NCAA or the NIT. So two good wins and two losses that will turn out, will turn out to be good losses. Johnson has been more distributor than scorer here. A look into the corner. Triple a little strong for Helms. A bit of a team rebound. So far for the Wolfpack, you know, no but bad losses, and I think that's what's most important. You know, I think, Paul, one thing I'd like to get into is, once again, Johnson strong to the rack. To me, the fact that the ACC is not maybe as loaded, as top-heavy, as deep as it's been in years past is something of a double-edged sword because I think, on the one hand, NC State has a chance to scare the top four or five spots in the conference. On the other hand, with the top teams not as elite as they've been in years past, you don't have as many opportunities in conference play for those great wins. Well, you also have some great non-conference wins by the ACC. Think about Duke. They beat Kansas at Madison Square Garden. Now Florida State beat Florida when they were ranked sixth. And Virginia Tech, that huge upset in Maui. So those are going to count. As you beat those opponents in ACC play, you'll get credit, a lot of credit for those wins. Great hustle. Take away by Forrest and App State to the floor to keep it alive. Look, when the ball's loose on the floor, you can't bend over to pick it up. You've got to dive on the floor to get it. Three for Forrest. Some guys have the green light, and Justin Forrest has the neon green light. I thought you didn't say Forrest green light. Back within two. Helms out of sorts here early. Another giveaway. Johnson. Helms fouls him, and Isaac Johnson to the line for a chance at a three-point play. Well, App State getting eight plus steals per game. Johnson with the not just the steal, but the straight line push. Played his high school basketball at Providence Day in Charlotte. He played with the likes of Grant Williams, Devon Dotson, Trey Works, who's now at Santa Clara. They, they won a few state championships. <laughs> they ought to have with that talent. He was also Johnson, an accomplished high jumper. This Johnson trying to three, no. Funderburg comes all the way out to Corral. So if you're NC State now, it's about quality shots. You're going against a very disciplined defense. That's a quality look to Funderburg and one. Markel Johnson just navigates so well in ball screens. The ability to stop on a dime, make a shot, or find his open teammate is a gift. First foul on Hunter Seacat, fifth on the Mountaineers. Just past the halfway mark of the opening half, and Thunderbird has been active. Daniels on to replace Helms. And now that full court look once again. And this is to speed up the Mountaineers, maybe turn them over, eat into the shot clock, and see if they can get some points from their defense. Forrest has felt it on this end of late. 
most times it goes through him. And that clock went down to about 16 before App State got into their offense. Point of three for Delft, too strong. And that pressure, the contest, rushed the shot. But take a look at App State in the black. Five guys inside the three-point line. They are packing it in. And that is a pun that's intended. I see what you did there. Delft, back up top. Williams not close. Yeah, back line defense means they're going to pressure the ball. And guys are going to be in, in early hook positions. And you got five guys that are really committed to the glass. January 5th, we'll take you to the Young Center in Louisville. Women's College Hoops as Duke takes on number seven Louisville. Cardinals won the last two there. Two Eastern right here on ACCN and the ESPN app. Now, not unlike the men's rankings at the top, Gonzaga became the sixth team to be ranked number one. The women's game has seen a similar shakeup. Thunderbolt no, Bates yes. And it is not as cut and dry this year as it has been in years past on the women's side. Louisville, though, has been a constant presence in that top 10 or 15. Five-point lead for NC State. Delft. No. Easy board for Bates. Johnson to Funderburk. Open look doesn't fall. You see Markel Johnson, 11 in the white. He's a paint penetrator. He gets into the paint, and then he starts to operate, and that's where you can really break down a defense. Deep three for Forrest. My goodness. That was quick and deep. He's hit three of those. He's got nine, and he draws App State back within two. It's, it's interesting in the, the tussle between the two superstar guards. At the moment, offensively, Forrest, who kicks that one out of bounds, has had the better of the matchup. Because of that, App State within two in Raleigh. Back at Raleigh, NC State's got a two-point lead. No C.J. Bryce, but Paul, they needed support scoring. They've gotten it from Beverly and Thunderbird. Well, Beverly's made 136 threes in first two seasons, and D.J. Thunderbird with the footwork, he knows to go right to the rim and finish. He stays in his lane. Well, three-point shots. Each side has made two of eight. I, I think the main stat that stands out to me so far, Paul, App State just three turnovers. The Wolfpack have given it away six times. And the Wolfpack turn you over 16 times. Dustin Kearns told us at shoot around today, if we can stay under 10, that would be fantastic. That's every coach's dream. Against NC State, that has to happen if you have a chance to win. Because they are terrific at points off turnovers. Given away for the seventh time, does the Wolfpack. And the Lewis rejection, but here is another one for Forrest, a little bit short. I like the way the Mountaineers get back on the missed shot. They are sprinting back. They're playing that pack line defense, trying to all help each other early and force that extra pass. Tough assignment for the freshman Donovan Gregory, especially when screened by Bates. Open three. No good for Beverly, who's gone a little bit cold. And the Lewis, a long freshman, lays it in off the window. And a timeout call, I believe, by App State. 30 seconds taken. We'll be right back to Raleigh. And the freshman Kendall Lewis ties the game at 20 inside PNC Arena in Raleigh. It just could not have gone much better thus far for Dustin Kearns and these Mountaineers. Last game before league play. This man, Markel Johnson, and a tremendous scorer for NC State, but he has been held off the cheat so far today. NC State's been very good at their ball screen offense, hitting the big right there. Off the penetration. They need to look at that first. The three point shot second. Thunderbird's got nine. Thunder, Thunderbird, biggest guy on the court. He's easy to find. 
throw it up high, he'll catch it. Well, look at the size inside right now. This is the Twin Towers look for NC State. With both Thunderbird and Bates out there, it is not easy for App State to get a look at the rack. They try one here from the freshman Gregory, but it does not fall. Devin Daniels always active with the ball is fouled. Watch NC State, they feed DJ Funderburk. Great hands to catch it, that ball got deflected. It's a quick finish. He's got quick springs, fast twitch fibers to get up to the rim. And a lot of big guys would catch that, gather, slow down, maybe bring the ball down. And by then it's too late because the defense can get in there and rake it out. What's really active at the rim has Funderburk all day. I, I'm fascinated by the contrast in personnel right now on the floor. You got these giants guarding the basket for NC State and not nearly that size. Isaac Johnson, the tallest guy on the floor right now for App State at 6'9". So offensively, what does that mean for the Mountaineers? It means that they have to continue to run their offense to screen the big guys to get cuts. They don't want to jack it up quick unless you're just the force. Kendall Lewis send it away, says Manny Bates. Well, Manny Bates leads the ACC in block shots at three per game. He got up there high, challenged it. Got that clean. O'Shawn, triple in the corner, too strong. And Bates now with 39 blocks. This is 13th game. He is on pace to shatter the single season record held by none other than Thurl Daly. The most famous team in NC State history. Johnson just can't score it so far today. Mountaineers did a good job of staying between Markel Johnson and the rim. Hard to the basket again from O'Shawn Williams, but that tall center, the duo Bates converges quickly and it's out of bounds to stay with App State. I thought Williams was going rim and at the last second he saw the size of NC State collapse. Decided to kick it out. A little beef off the bench. Hunter Seacat, the more traditional post player, comes in for the Mountaineers. Nice slip. Executed play, just couldn't finish. Danny Dixon is on the floor for NC State. He does not get a lot of minutes, a miss in the corner, and, and you called it, I think, perfectly, Paul. Helms in one of those ruts when he doesn't hit the first shot. He is not looking that good shooting the basketball. And some guys can keep shooting and not be affected by their last shot. Helms is the type of player that needs to make that first shot to feel good. He's totally out of sorts. He goes to his knee. Hell ball will keep it with NC State. They lead by four. Back in Raleigh right after this. <laughs> NC State leading at home for getting into ACC play over App State by four. Kevin Keats drawing up some plays coming out of this break. New Year's Eve, Boston College and number four Duke tip off conference play from Cameron. Devils won 12 of the last 13 against the currently in league undefeated BC Eagles. They've never won at Cameron. And a, a young stud, another great freshman for Duke, is having one whale of a year, Paul. Big Vernon Carey has had a bunch of double doubles this year. Jerry's Hamilton, super sophomore for Boston College. Had a career high against San Francisco. He's a good player right out of the Cannon School here in North Carolina. And a return for Thornton back to Cameron Indoor. No Trey Jones yesterday for the second game. He's day to day. I would imagine he might lace him up in league play. Oh, they got big Vernon Carey. Great back door. Carey's got eight double doubles this season so far. Delph with six after that thunderous dunk. This has been super impressive so far from App State. How about the play by Dustin Kearns? That came out of the timeout. He read the overplay, designed it, and his team executed. Well, and NC State gets bailed out there. Helen's a putback after an air ball from Beverly. 
It was a three-point shot which buoyed NC State early, and they have not been close here over the last five or six minutes. Oh, it's nice to see Helms contribute to the game when he's not scoring. That, that's a big thing to look for for guys that are shooters. Can they help their team when the shot's not falling? Almost takes it away. App State has only turned it over three times in this game. What a play here. Seacat reads it. Little pump fake. Back cut. No weak side help. Tremendous play out of the timeout by Dustin Kearns. And again, this is not the prototype for Dustin Kearns. Forrest. Too strong. How about the athleticism for Delft to keep it alive? He'll try for three. Too strong. You can see that App State, they're not here to hold the ball. They're not here to feel good. They're here to win this game, but they have to win it in their style of play. Eighth turnover for NC State. It is not hard to figure out what that man will be talking about in the locker room at the half. Well, usually NC State turns you over about eight times going into the half. And Dustin Kearns emphasized it with his team. Limit your turnovers and points off of turnovers. Get our defense back and set, and we can win this game. Dangerous pass, but they find an open man, Johnson, in the corner. He is harassed by Helms. It bounces to Seacat. Seven to shoot, and there's the fourth turnover. Great defense by the Wolfpack. Ball movement, Johnson. Left hand dish, pump fake, Beverly, Helms, three. The best possession of the first half for the Wolfpack. And it all stemmed from their defense. And with that three, their largest lead. Big trip, it feels like, for the Mountaineers. They go to their best player, and Forrest off the glass. Justin Forrest. See the way NC State don't push it, make or miss. That is a brutal miss, but Thunderbird there to clean it up. This team has been programmed and well conditioned to push the ball. Of course, on turnovers and steals, but on misses and makes, they're trying to get the ball down the floor as quickly as possible and attack. I mean, Helms missed almost the entire backboard. Another deflection is smelling blood. Wolfpack to the races. What a look to Daniels. Dangerous time for the Mountaineers looking to get to the locker room. That is an amazing spurt. Eight for Devin Daniels. And that's what makes NC State so difficult to play against. The ability to explode offensively from their defense. Let's see if they look to calm it down with Forrest once again with 10 to shoot. Instead, Williams down the lane. What a finish. And see State the last shot of the half. And at the last possession of the half, Johnson scores his first bucket. And it gives NC State its largest lead of the afternoon. Nine point the edge going to the locker room, thanks in large part to that man, DJ Funderburg. Funderburg has been extremely active and aggressive on the defensive glass, blocking shots. Getting coached up right here. <laughs> See what Kevin Keats has in store. How many of his own players he boxes up in the locker room at the half. Get the ball to Fundeberg in the second half, coach. Simple message, they lead by nine. Howling at a beautiful night sky for the last time in 2019 here in Raleigh, NC State, leading App State by nine. Along with Paul Biancardi, Will Fleming, and Paul, for most of the first half, App State hung right in there. They played beautifully. They only turned it over three times, but a couple quick giveaways at the end of the half stretched the lead tonight and made this thing look totally different. Yeah, for the Wolfpack, second chance points kept them in the game, and they forced a couple of late turnovers in the half. Two turnovers that led to five points. And that's what broke this game open. Braxton Beverly shooting 54% in his last five games. He came out hot for the Wolfpack. And then they went inside to the big man, DJ Funderburg, with some nifty footwork, some beautiful.
and finishes. The Wolfpack doing a great job of finding him off of ball screen situations. And on the other side, Justin Forrest. He has the forest green light, as you would say in the first half. He plays unfazed by the competition, knocking down shots, getting to the rim. I'm not going to go anywhere near forest from trees. Here's what I do know. NC State shot at 41% for the field. Neither team made a whole lot of threes. I think sort of an expected rebounding edge, particularly given the strategy for the Wolfpack. And what about the second chance points? Huge edge to NC State. Well, that helped the Wolfpack why they were not making shots. But And take a look at those bench points. That is huge in the first half. NC State goes eight deep, and they got help in the first half. Markel Johnson was not that active in the first half, but Thunderbird was a put back. He led the way for the Wolfpack. They'll head into the second half at home with a nine-point lead. Back in Raleigh where Appalachian State hung tight till the very end of the open half. It ended on a 15-6 Wolfpack run. Beautiful pass by Beverly to Helms. And then how about DJ Funderburg? Just working the glass, working the paint. Markel Johnson, a tough shot maker. Terrific body control once he gets into the lane. And he has the vision to dish it out for the assist. Well, if you had told Kevin Keats that after all the turnovers, all the sloppy play, Markel Johnson with only two points, App State only giving it away five times, that they would have a nine-point lead, I, I think in the end he would have taken that. Without C.J. Bryce, their leading scorer sitting out this game with the concussion protocol. Happened in shoot around today. Manny Bates came down on a rebound. I mean, they think they're exercising utmost caution there as Forrest trying to get past Bates. Not a good idea. Kevin Keats loves to go live during the shoot around. A lot of coaches like to do that. Gets their team ready for games. They think he'll be fine for the next game. They're just really playing it safe. It'll be at Clemson to. Open up the full AC slate, ACC slate for the Wolfpack. Beverly was great early here. He steps on the sideline. An ominous start for the Wolfpack. Yet another turnover, their ninth. That was the closeout by the Martinez. Getting out to the shooter quickly, recognizing it's Beverly. He's got a shot fake at one dribble. He, he loves to catch and shoot. That's what he seeks out. Forrest harassed by Daniels into the post. Johnson swatted away. That's not the usual shot blocker, Pat Andre. Quick move by Johnson. Andre on the other end. That's what Andre's noted for. Devin Daniels has been everywhere. He's a ball. Every time I watch Devin Daniels play, he's into the game. He does what his team needs him to do, whether it's score, assist, defend. And, and in my mind, he's a catalyst in many ways for this team. He's got 10, joining Funderburk as the Wolfpack duo in double figures. Forrest, what a teardrop. He gets in there and he knows when to release it. A lot of guys want to go deep. And when you're small as a guard and you're trying to go in deep against size, you're going to get it rejected. The float game is so important for young guards. Johnson over top, Seacat intercepts, and Johnson controls. Now they're going to say that before Seacat got it to Isaac Johnson, he sort of rolled over and traveled. And that was great hustle by Hunter Seacat. The ability to get out on that ball screen and then sprint back with high hands to try to get the steal. Now, Dustin Kearns told us his mojo with this program has been right out of the Mike Young playbook. Now at Virginia Tech, the long time with Mike is Johnson, his second bucket. At Wofford, and the entire mission statement is eliminate all entitlement. And that ain't easy to do amongst kids this age. You think about what Dustin Kearns did at Presbyterian. Took a five-win team the year before, went to 11. Then he got it to 20. They should have locked him up with a lifetime contract at Presbyterian and had a parade for him. 20 wins at Presbyterian. They had 14 straight losing seasons before Dustin Kearns arrived. Delph on a put back. 
You know, I think this is no knock on assistant coaches at major programs because many of them have gone on to success. Beverly for three, no good. Daniels again to the offensive glass. Held ball will stay with NC State. But to me, for a program like App State, it makes so much sense to go to a guy who has done exactly what they're looking to do, and that is take a program where it's been difficult to win and engineer a complete and total turnaround. And, and with an 84 start, it's the best start since 06, 07. And their calling card is their defense. Their offense will get better as the season goes on. Johnson. This guy offensively, Johnson. He is just tough to keep out of the lane. And the both the finish. Now Johnson the other way. Asking for a little too much. Daniels then Bates can't finish. Forrest Strip, Johnson. And finally, the third time a charm for James Lewis. Well, that time, App State, they just out hustled. NC State down the floor. It's unusual, Kevin Keats' teams. Andre, the Lehigh transfer, came over to be the sharpshooter. Johnson, top of the key, in and out. The other way to Williams. Just past Markel Johnson. If Markel Johnson is going to take that shot high off the ball screen, then Braxton Beverly has to sprint back, or Devin Daniels. Somebody else has to get back as the point guard in defensive transition. Someone's got to protect the rim. If Pack have missed their last five shots. Andre. No. Make it six misses in a row, and App State suddenly within five. Chance to cut it even further. Nearly a triple for Adrian Delph. Kevin Keats holding his breath there. Daniels asserted. Bumped, no call. Andre, he is fouled on the floor. Well, it's not been a thing of beauty for NC State in this second half. Headed to the bench, Forrest and Co. within five more right after this. Five-point NC State lead talking about the ACC league schedule beginning on Tuesday. This is the ACC Network after all, but the Sun Belt has gotten underway. And how about two great, super impressive, and maybe unexpected road wins for the Mountaineers? Well, the one in South Alabama there. Pick to come in first in the Sun Belt Conference. When you can go on the road early and beat off a team that is preseason number one in your conference, that, that can give you a lot of confidence. They will have three home games next week to start the slate. Three in seven days. Both the Georgia schools, Southern and State. Johnson underneath the rim. What makes Markel Johnson so difficult is that he is a triple threat player. The ability to drive it, shoot it, and pass it. He's a hard guard. I was in triple threat position as that one came to us. Here's Markel to the rack. Yeah, a little hesitation. And look at the separating speed that he has on the baseline. This guy has another gear with the ball in his hands. Now, Paul, I always find that it's the mark of a real impressive player when after a rough 20 minutes, they can go into the locker room, regroup. Don't you think Johnson looks totally reinvigorated? He, he looks more focused, yes. But sometimes he's trying to find the balance. Another jump shot. Forrest has got 16. For Markel Johnson, it's, it's finding the balance between facilitating and scoring. Helens again out of control, turns it over. Now tomorrow on the ACC Network, Yale takes on Carolina at the Smith Center. UNC just looking for any kind of a win. They've dropped four straight and at the moment projected to be out of the NCAA field. Cole Anthony, will he or will he not return? They, they are searching for answers in Chapel Hill. Yeah, they're a hurting team right now, but Roy Williams has time to put that together. They still beat you up on the glass. The best rebounding team in the ACC. They're going to stick to their style of running, rebounding, and, and points in transition. 
Uh, I thought that it's not the first time you've thought this all season long, but the loss to Gonzaga, uh, there were times when you looked at the floor and said, of the five guys in that Carolina Blue, th th this, you are in the business, Paul, of evaluating talent, and, and you know that the pipeline is always wide open for Carolina. They get the greatest recruits, it seems, year in and year out. And you just looked at the floor of that team that has lost four straight before the win to UCLA. It, they just did not look like a Carolina five on the floor. Well, it's hard to win when you lose your best player in the most important position on the court, the point guard. And Cole Anthony is that type of difference maker. 11-2 App State run, a little whistle and a foul on the Mountaineers. You know, when you have Cole Anthony, you always have a chance to win the game. He got off to a terrific start in ACC play, and then the scouting report defense got heavy against him, but he was able to find his teammates, and now the teammates have more pressure on them. Uh, Anthony Harris coming back from an ACL. Jeremiah Francis has been hurt for a couple of years. And another finish by DJ Funderburg. He's been the best player, period. Bar none, active to the rack and a chance at an N1. Well, you know Kevin Keats at halftime was saying, let's feed our big fella. He's quick to the rim. He's got nice touch, good concentration. He's been dominating this game in the paint and at the rim. There are not a lot of big men with the first step that good. You know, talking about Carolina, the question was always, even after Anthony burst onto the scene, and boy, did he announce himself right out of the gates. Game one for Carolina, he proved his worth. But would they have enough even when he was healthy beyond him? I think so far the answer has been a pretty clear no. Meantime, for UVA, it, offense has been a difficulty. They scored 37 in the first half today, which for them is like 70 and a half. They'll defend it. Can they score enough? And Louisville, the rough day against Kentucky, losing yesterday. And Braxton Key is now back or on his way back for Virginia. But the defense for Virginia is going to be there all season long. You can bank on that. Doesn't matter how it happens, the end result, they'll take it. James Lewis, a two-hand flush, and App State within three. App State just quicker to the basketball on that possession. Hanging in this thing, Thunderbird gets it again and puts it down. I'll tell you what, the Wolfpack are recognizing the mismatch and the dominating performance by DJ Thunderbird, doing everything they can to get four guys around him and then feed him. He's got 16. Forrest trying to split the trees, does not, and another giveaway. Doesn't this ball have to go to number zero? You would think, but I'll tell you what, don't be surprised if Braxton Beverly gets off a three-point shot. This guy, he missed his last six, but he's a next shot maker. James Lewis in black doing everything he can to play backside D. They're running a play for Thunderbird, and Johnson almost takes it away. And they were trying to hit the lift man. Three-pointer, Beverly, no. And Johnson with a one-hand rebound. I told you he was going to shoot it. I'm not sure that's quite how you predicted it, but yes, he does go up for Beverly, and upstate holds. And a lot of guys... Missed six shots in a row. They don't even want to touch the basketball. <laughs> Braxton Beverly, he wants to shoot it. <laughs> He's always got the go ahead. NC State having all they can handle from App State. NC State, a five point lead at home, but where would they be? Paul Biancardi without DJ Funderburg. Well, the 6'10 junior from Cleveland, Ohio, has his hands ready on the misses. And he's quick to put it back up, but offensively, he catches it with some quick footwork and a spin move, posting up deep. Look at how deep he catches the ball. At 6'10", with great hands and good athleticism, Wolfpack got to continue to feed D.J. Funderburg. State looking to this man, Justin Forrest, who became a thousand point scorer on November the 15th. Funderburg, one off the season high, two off the career mark. For the boards. First. This is the back end. He's got 17. He's the son of James Forrest, who hit one of the most famous buzzer beaters in recent memory in the NCAA tournament. His dad, James, hit the shot that sent Georgia Tech to the Sweet 16, buzzer beating three over USC. I don't know if dad was built like his son. I mean, he is put together. Look at him. He takes it away, finds Williams, who comes to the other side of the rim, and I think, fortunately, Jackson there to clean it up. A lot of transition baskets. 
for App State on NC State's missed shots. They're within two are the Mountaineers and Seacat comes way out up top to bump Johnson. One thing I'll say for Markel Johnson, he's a tremendous competitor, athlete, and player. He also, Paul, really sells the contact on those screens. Even when he's just barely brushed, he really makes a point of showing it to the officials. And the body control. A little, little hold on that drive. Official missed it. Hellums. That's great. When Hellums can get to the rim. And that just opens up his jump shot. What an encouraging game thus far for App State. Dustin Kearns has got to be thrilled. Chance of a signature ACC road win heading into Sunbelt play. Well, they're going to have to execute here and be careful of the hands of NC State. Well, Seacat has not played a lot in this game. That is certainly not his forte. That's the eighth turnover. That one was unforced. No real heavy pressure by NC State. And against the Wolfpack, you can live with it if they pressure you into doing something, but those are tough to swallow. The good part about that turnover, it was a dead ball turnover where State could not capitalize and, and run in transition. Those are the ones that cost you the game. Funderburg is really looking for the basketball. Well, first he's going to set the screen, and then he is a big-time rim runner. Andre. Strong. They're going to call a foul on Delft. They're going up against Helms. I don't know. That looked like 50-50 to me. But goes the way of NC State. First foul on Delft. Wolfpack ball. Out of bounces for Johnson. Beverly wide open. fouled by Beverly going to the basket. Markel Johnson went to the rim, didn't have anything, picked up his dribble, went to the other side of the floor with a terrific pass. If you're Whoa. Braxton Beverly, that's what you want, a wide open catch and shoot. How about this? We remember he made his first two threes of the game. He has now missed his last nine. And they, most of them have been wide open, great looks like that one. And Pat Andres had a few looks as well. A terrific three-point shooter. Isn't that the recipe? If you're going to be upstate, come on the road. You got to get a little bit fortunate and have some of those misses. You got to have some misses. You got to limit your mistakes, and you cannot give up a lot of points from your mistakes. So far, App State's been terrific in that department. Now, not to harp on the kid, but Hunter Seacat, when he has the ball in his hands against this team, it just has not gone well. Now, he's got to put it over his head. I think he's got to come out of the game, frankly. Up top to Thunderbird. I mentioned it before, how well Markel Johnson navigates the ball screens. He can slip and slide, find the open crack, and how about the ability to get into the paint? and hand out his eighth assist of the game. That was a big moment. Johnson dishing up top to Thunderbird. Well, that is a momentum-changing play for the Wolfpack. Gets the crowd off their feet in Raleigh. Six-point Wolfpack lead, and all this guy is ready to start celebrating the dawn of 2020. We'll celebrate with nothing but net our weekly basketball studio show preview. The week look back to the best games from the week gone by. Highlights, analysis, and insight that only we can provide. This Sunday at 6 Eastern on ACC Network and also live on the ESPN app. I want to spend midnight December 31 with that guy. Go ahead. <laughs> he'll, he'll be back home as Johnson a chance at an end one. I'm going to pass on that invitation. <laughs> Markel Johnson. I'm sorry. Isaac Johnson. All the Johnsons have been playing well tonight. Isaac Johnson. Big guy with skill. And he rebounds at nine per game, but he's got a face-up game. Over 30% from three. How about that? A four. Point possession is dealt. Gets underneath the Bates, and it's a two-point game. App State very alert, very aware of their surroundings and situation. Look at that defense. It's all inside the three-point line except for the guy on the ball. 
That's the pack line defense. Two man game. Johnson and Thunderbird strip. And sees Dave Ball. And part of the pack line defense is when the ball goes into the post, they're going to double it. So there's going to be two on the post. And then they'll spread out and deny passes. Paul, for an NC State team that's looking to challenge the top tier of the ACC, I think this is one of the real questions. In a tight spot late, who is the go-to guy to get easy buckets? Is it Markel Johnson? He's got two to shoot. Step back three. Way short, but Devin Daniels with an offensive rebound to Beverly. I'm telling you, that guy Daniels is a catalyst. Wolfpack has six guys. Five guys, excuse me, that average double figures. C.J. Bryce is out in this game. He's their leading scorer with 16. Him and Markel Johnson, that, that's a one-two punch for close to 30 points a game. I, I believe it's going to be one of those two guys every night that can carry the team. I, I love Daniels and what he gives them. And Helms, it, it can be an X factor in many ways. And then they have some paint game. D.J. Funderburk delivered in this game. He can play like this in the ACC. Markel Johnson has been relatively quiet. He has been decisive and active driving the basket. Got seven after the free throw make, and he's really distributed. And, and that's what makes him difficult to scout against. You can't play him just for the shot. You can't play him for the drive. And when he penetrates, you just can't think that he's going to give it up because he's a high assist guy. He, he, he reads the game and makes the play. So got eight rebounds in this game. Big trip for App State. And he just had a triple-double against the Citadel. Forrest trying to tie the game just off the mark. And that's the ones you got to live with if you bust the Kearns. Johnson in transition. I think throwing it up to Funderburg there. They're going to get a blocking call. Contact underneath is Forrest back in transition with Markel Johnson. When we talk about points off for turnovers, when you take a bad shot or a, a shot that's too quick, you're going to give up some points. But how about Forrest? First guy back trying to take the charge. That was close. Feet were out of the restricted area. Maybe, just maybe, a little late getting the feet set, but that was one of those coin flip plays. Yeah, I, I like the call. Great officiating crew this afternoon. You don't even know they're here. And when you, when you feel that way about the officials, you know they're doing a great job. Jamie Lucky, Brett Hampton, Tim Comer. I'm with you on that. 8.03 to go in this one. And, and they've done a great job in a tight game. Manny Bates picked up. Manny Bates. Well, he just wanted that. He just snatched it. From the App State players. That's how you rebound in traffic. Three-point possession, six-point lead. Another big spot. You figure that Forrest could be the key man offensively. He's got it at the top of the key. Seven to shoot. Forrest comes to the rescue. Down the lane, off the glass. Bates rejection. On a put back for Lewis won't go. That was very close to a goaltend, but it clearly did not hit the window before Bates got to it. Yeah, two golden opportunities for NC State. This has been an enormous 30 seconds. The game was teetering, and State now sort of comfortable once again, swatted out of bounds. Some discussion, I think that's got to be NC State basketball. Well, NC State working the glass, and it's Manny Bates in traffic. Puts it up over three guys. And defensively, Manny Bates rejects it in Raleigh. Well, on the road in the ACC, Justin Forrest is keeping App State in this game. Well, he hit his average with 17. His three. He's not a great three-point shooter by percentage, but he is a big shot maker. I love his float game. I love when he catches the ball. He's ready to shoot it or drive it. He makes great decisions with the ball in his hands. He's becoming more of a complete all-around player. And as a scoring guard, he has to play the point guard position for App State this year. They do not have a point guard, a pure point guard. 18 second chance points for NC State. They've come in bunches here of late, and Devin Daniels is forced to call a timeout on the inbound. Some more good defense by the Mountaineers. You know, just broad picture here, Paul. I think, look, it's not yet January. We get that. App State still has major designs on winning this game. But win, lose, or draw in this one. 
I think it's pretty clear the Sun Belt Conference has got to be on notice about this App State team. They win the first two in league on the road. They've got a star in for us, and they're able to handle this kind of environment. I legitimately think they got a chance to challenge for that league title this year. And when you look at the graphic, you go down to 62 points per game. That's what they allow right now. That's going to be the staple, the calling card for App State. They're going to beat you with their defense. Justin Forrest is going to have some big nights. He, he gets help from other players, Isaac Johnson. But Dustin Kurtz said this morning, the identity of this team all season long will be its defense. And they are playing terrific defense. You know, NC State averages 82. There's two easy ones. More second chance points for Bates. This game has been a battle of, of pace and tempo all afternoon. It's, you know, it's the push and the pull. Let's see Stave with a little bit of a push at the moment. Back in front by eight. Johnson finds an open shooter down beneath the basket. That's James Lewis, and he is fouled. Well, you see NC State Johnson with the jump shot. Watch Bates. Jump, taps it to himself, and he doesn't just lay it back in. He flushes it back. I love the way the bigs for NC State catch it off the rim and go quickly back up. Yeah, athletic in the post, dominating on those second chance points. Forrest, a little too strong with a three. And C.J. Bryce will be back. And you look at the guard play, Markel Johnson, Devin Daniels, and the bigs. You just mentioned it. Up top, Thunderbird. Athletic, strong inside. I see NC State as a team that is right around that Three, four, or five marker in the ACC this year. 8-0 run for the Wolfpack. Johnson, no. There is James Lewis again, active on the glass to the floor. Trying to five an exit valve. Forrest in amongst the trees, nearly turns it over, and was he fouled by NC State before the pass? Kevin Keats cannot believe it. He's waiting for an explanation. They will get Bates on his third foul. That's eye contact right there between Markel Johnson and DJ Funderburk. The ability to see each other, read each other. This is an experienced NC State team. Oh, that's a huge turning point because now, trailing by 10, App State gets free throws. Clock stops at six minutes. And the guy who, for the first two months of the season, shot more free throws than anybody in the country. Well, he's going to live at the free throw line all season long. He's a hard guy to guard because he has straight line speed, but he also has that craftiness to change his direction. He can put his body into you and not get called for the offensive foul. A special knack to create fouls and make free throws. He has not made the back end of two one and ones. He's stuck on 18 points. And the lead is nine. Now, I was at Wake Forest with NC State, trying to salt away a win there in Winston-Salem, and they did not do that great a job of pulling away. It seemed like tentative a little bit down the stretch. See how they do here. Daniel, three. It doesn't matter whether it's zone or man. NC State is going to find their shooters. They've got the largest lead. Daniels picks a big spot for a triple, and they lead by a dozen. Delph cannot answer, and again, Thunderbird. You know, NC State, when you play against them, they have that burst. Offensively, not just in the half court. Another turnover for State, but they get their burst from their defense. They get points from their defense, but when they have to play five on five, they have shooters, they have an inside presence, and they have a go-to guy in Markel Johnson, and I think in C.J. Bryce, two guys that between them average 30 points. Yeah, it's worth remembering all this today without Bryce. And I think today, Paul, it's been a little different for NC State. They have gotten so much of their work done crashing the offensive glass. Well, that's, that's a great sign of effort when the jump shot's not falling. Remember, this is the first game after break. And the guys go home for break. 
They eat a lot, and everybody tells them how good they are. And they come back a little fat. I did half of that. Nobody really told me how good I am. 12-point NC State <laughs> lead. They'll have the basketball. It's a, it's a tough game to play. The game before break is a tough game. And the game, the first game after break is difficult because, again, your guys have been away from campus. They've practiced for maybe one or two days. You got to get back in that rhythm. You got to get back in that that mindset that, hey, we, we've got the whole second half of the season. And for NC State today, we talked about it in the open, not to look ahead into ACC play. You're playing a, a team in App State that has won four in a row and has one of the better defenses in the country. Well, they ask so much of Forrest. He's played 33 minutes in this game. He just picked up his third foul. A little blood on the jersey for Devin Daniels. But looking at Forrest sort of holding on to the jersey shorts, he is a super conditioned athlete. You do figure that in this environment against a team like NC State, the first signs is maybe forcing it on the offensive end with the gas tank trending a little bit towards empty. But he has to have a big game for App State to win. He's going to have to take a lot of shots, and some of them may be bad, but he is what I like to call a good, bad shot maker. Justin Forrest. Sometimes there's some bad ones, but he can make bad ones and he can make open ones. He's that talented. 12-1, NC State run. That is an athletic take it out. Look out for Isaac Johnson. A huge fall to the floor. Shoulder and head, and you just hope he's okay. He's holding his left hip. And he went up for what was going to be an unbelievable dunk and parallel to the ground crashing to the hardwood Isaac Johnson going hard going strong bodies collide up high and he landed on the left side of his body the shoulder the hip and the back attended to by the training staff and he is in obvious discomfort. And again, they're looking at that left hip. That, that clearly took the brunt of it, which is better than anything in the head or neck area. The, the officials will go to the monitors to look at this for flagrant one, whether there was any excessive contact up top near the head. Real time, it did not look like that to me, Paul. And even on the replay, you watch Manny Bates. He's going up for the block. Now those are two bodies that were colliding at about rim level and Bates clearly goes for the ball. Isaac Johnson goes in for a hard dunk. Manny Bates goes in for a hard block and they both hit the floor. Yeah I don't think there's much there. We will wait and see what the officials rule and at the moment the, the key point of concern here is the health of Isaac Johnson. And just as we say that App State looking like a team that can really challenge in the Sun Belt uh, that is lessened considerably if they're without this 6'9 senior from Charlotte. Well, he brings so much to the team. Leadership, points, rebounds. This young man out of Providence Day has a vivacious personality. It's one of the leaders for Dustin Kearns. He lifts his head up off the floor, grabbing at his ribs, too. And yeah, the left side of his body went down first, and it went down really hard that's a great sign to pull himself up He'll walk off on his own power we're talking to Kevin Keats here and I think they are going to call that a flagrant one We're going to get an explanation from the officials. I didn't see anything, certainly not unnecessary. I guess maybe they could argue it was excessive. No contact, no push from behind. And Manny Bates is always going for the ball. Extended conversation here at our table. This officiating crew, which has done such a wonderful job all day long, all got the explanation. And here it is. Well, the officials point was the offensive player was in a vulnerable position up by the rim 
And it's up to the defense to almost, in some ways, avoid that contact. Which they felt was excessive. In, in a really bad position. Makes the first. App State was within two at 50 to 48 since then until that free throw. A 12-1 Wolfpack win. Isaac Johnson remains on the bench getting worked on as Forrest makes it low. More explanation continuing to talk about the vulnerable position and the unnecessary contact. You know, I think, Paul, that maybe according to the letter of the law, that, that perhaps is the right interpretation as App State looks to inbound it. For me, that's two kids going to the basket at the same time trying to make a basketball play. Yeah, Manny Bates clearly went to reject the block shot. And because two bodies are in the air, the offensive player is in a vulnerable position. But Jamie Lucky said that was unnecessary and also unfortunate. The reason for the call. Forrest is going to go to the free throw line again. And again, I, I understand, Paul, why we have these rules. It's important to protect players. We don't want excessive contact. We want injuries to go down. Uh, it, it is another instance, though, to me, where when you look at everything in super slow-mo, frame by frame, it's easier to find a split second where somebody's in a vulnerable position and gets Absolutely. Hit. I think it's all about intention. And obviously, Manny Bates had only one intention was to block the shot. And his momentum carried him right into Isaac Johnson, which created the contact and, and the hard fall. Uh, and this game looked like it was about to steamroll away from App State. And all of a sudden, Forrest has had a lot of time at the free throw line. And with that make, they're back within nine. Heavily off the bench. Yeah, I thought it was a clean play. Didn't agree with the call. Again, they've had a great day, this crew. Uh, to me, the collision in our modern sports world of an excess of caution, but just as importantly, so much review and frame by frame breakdown. And my question would be, what if Manny Bates got hurt? Then what would the call be? And would there be a call? Isaac Johnson has gone to the locker room. Here is Thunderbird in the post, almost stripped away. But NC State will hang on to the basketball. Crazy sequence. Open Isaac Johnson is okay. For now, App State is. They're within nine. App State, I am your father, made it 62-53 for NC State. 3.48 to go in this one. January 5th, we'll take you to the Yum Center for some women's college hoop. Duke, number seven, Louisville Cardinals. Three of four in that matchup. Two Eastern right here on ACCN and the ESPN app. So look at the top ten in the women's game. Three ACC teams represented there. And again, now UConn back on top in a year that has seen Oregon and Stanford on top of those rankings. And once again, a lot of undefeateds in the women's game and, and some with just one loss. Not that way in the men's game. Some surprise remaining undefeateds. Looking at you, Liberty. See what App State has left in the tank. Isaac Johnson back on the bench. He's going to come to the scorer's table. And the other counterpart. Markel Johnson with a left hand, an enormous play and a chance at an N1. Markel Johnson, you know, he's a clutch player. When the game gets closer to the end, he, he seems to feel the need to take over. Hit the game winning shot against UNCG. Markel Johnson posted a triple double against the Citadel. You know, he kind of picks and chooses throughout the game. But I've noticed from watching on film that last four minutes, it's Markel Johnson time. Well, that was not Markel Johnson time. An air ball on the free throw. And here he has just been great the last couple of games. Stat sheet deluxe. He did not have a point in this game until the last second, literally, of the first half. He's got 11 now. Bigs rejection. The bigs for State have been fantastic this afternoon. Manny Bates, fifth rejection. 
He has had some eye-popping block totals this season. Yeah, number one in the ACC in block shots, and D.J. Funderburk has been an absolute monster inside. He blocks seven against Detroit Mercy. This is now his fourth game with five or more blocks. Here is Markel Johnson, and he again will go to the line. You see the way he baits you with the dribble? A little pullback, a little forward, a little hesitation. He gets the defender off balance. Watch this. Just kind of dances with it, a little hesitation, and then just explodes. It really slices in between three App State defenders, and he still gets it up to the rim. I'm totally with you on his demeanor and aggression at the end of these halves. He's the ringleader, and he just seems to sense the moment is right for him. At the playground, you would say, he's got game. <laughs> you want to pick him on your team. You don't want to play against him. But if there is a room for improvement, Kevin Keats told me, just be more consistent with your game. Isaac Johnson is on the floor. There is Seacat. So Isaac Johnson's grabbing at his left side. He's back on the floor. That in and of itself is encouraging for App State. That's fantastic. Still kind of holding his sternum or touching his sternum in his rib cage. She stayed in no hurry, which is an unusual position for them. Markel time. Daniels. Good! Well, that's about as good a drive and find as you'll see in college basketball. That might be the dagger. 13 point lead with just over two minutes to go. Forrest is going to be bumped by Daniels. Watch Markel Johnson just survey the defense to drive. Here comes the help. There's the kick. And Daniels with his feet ready, his hands are out, knocks it down. Makes you wonder what might happen if NC State took their time a little more often, Paul. Well, they execute pretty well in the half court. They do. They score points in transition, yes. They score points from their turnovers. This afternoon, they've been fabulous on second chance points. But they read each other and play off each other very well. I was at practice yesterday, and Kevin Keats, you know, had them executing in a half-court situation. Fans are going crazy because if two free throws in a half are missed, they get free chicken. Seven of 11 from the line for Forrest. All half long, he's made one of two. And they go crazy in all. Is that for the table here as well, or is that just the fans? <laughs> Go for a little chicken sandwich, although not to be too technical about things. You can't get them today on Sunday, but starting tomorrow, everybody can cash those in. Good point. Markel Johnson again into the corner. That was in the notes. As the shot clock expires. Third time goes down for Daniels. I'll tell you what, NC State has done a fabulous job at responding to everything that App State has thrown at them this afternoon. Kendall Lewis, beautiful move using the rim. The freshman from Snellville, Georgia. Kendall. And a teaching moment for Dustin Kearns. But I think it's worth revisiting one last time. Our, our viewers are going to see a whole lot of NC State on our network. They are going to vie for the top of the ACC. But for the moment, one last time, Dustin Kearns at App State, they, they look to be a team that can threaten. And sometimes, Paul, you know this. You've coached. You've covered so many of these games. You find yourself meeting a coach, looking at the tape, watching a game with your own two eyes, and saying, this is the perfect marriage. And I think you can easily say that about App State and Dustin Kearns. Absolutely. Did a fabulous job at Presbyterian. And he has App State off to a fantastic start. But his season's going to come down to March. I know he's a, a guy who talks about the process, and that's how you win games in March. You do the little things, and you pay attention to the details during the season. Well, we've harped on Thunderbird, but Daniels has been spectacular for NC State. Forrest, not surprising, leads the way for the Mountaineers. I think in, in this particular kind of a game, that's been one of the issues for App State. Can they find that depth in scoring? 
today they have not. Well, Funderburk averages a little over 10. He's got 20. It's been the difference for State without C.J. Bryce. Did Bates travel? Yes, he did. But App State came in to win this game. They executed their game plan very well. NC State's going to stay under their 82 points a game. But NC State did a great job responding to their mistakes by just playing the next possession. That's what experienced teams do. Forrest now with 25 and another opportunity to time out. They have been dominated on the glass. 51 to 34. And a lot of those have come on the offensive end, those second chance points, which continue to be a part of the story of this game. And C.J. Bryce, the leading rebounder for NC State and almost seven per game. So this team has a little bit of everything, NC State. Terrific guard play. Athletes inside who can finish, score, and rebound. They're experienced. Kevin Keats, proven winner at UNC Wilmington. Got NC State to the NCAA tournament in his first year, almost in his second. Uh, this, this program is by far ahead of schedule. I'll tell you what, Paul. NC State will go into league play, which starts really in earnest on Tuesday with their 10th win, their 10 and 3, the 20 game league schedule. And so much of it matters when you play the big blue bloods in the league. And for NC State, early on, at least by the numbers, it breaks well for them. They're at Clemson, who is 0-2 in the league. They host Notre Dame here. They're 0-2. They go to Virginia Tech with Dustin Kern's mentor, Mike Young, at the helm. And then they go to Miami and host Clemson here. So yeah, that that is as good a start to the second wave of league play as Kevin Keats could have asked for. That just means on the back end in February, yes. you're going to have some tougher games. But the league is a little bit down as compared to last year. They lost 13 players to the NBA draft. Of course, they brought in some sensational freshmen. But when you're bringing in freshmen as good as they are and you're losing NBA players, at that rate, it, it, it's difficult to be at the same level that you were at last year. And we had some special guys in the league, obviously, with R.J. Barrett, Zion Williamson, Virginia had DeAndre Hunter, North Carolina had their stars, a team of stars. The next line after that Clemson game at Virginia, and then two games later, Carolina, in a span of three or five games. Thunderbird has been enormous. This is the time of game where some folks in the desert begin to pay attention. The the line on this one was 13 and a half, so right there. Forrest, deep three, nowhere close, and Thunderbird calls it in. And that is a foul that probably won't thrill Dustin Kearns, a career high for DJ Thunderbird. Well, if you're Kevin Keats, and, and Coach Keats told me this yesterday, he said, you know what? DJ Funderburk's played very well for us. I'm looking for that great performance. This afternoon, DJ Funderburk had that great performance. In the absence of CJ Bryce, he doubled his average. Was a monster on the glass. Did a terrific job at altering and changing shots. Kevin Keats gets the most out of his guys. When you go to his practice, it's high energy. As you say, they take it full bore in the shoot around. Audible gasp from the sports books on those free throw misses from Markel Johnson. Maybe the last trip for App State or not. Way deep on a three point shot for O'Shawn Williams. And maybe NC State will dribble the air out of the basket. And if Dustin Kern, if Dustin Kern, you're proud of your program. You gave yourself a real chance to win for NC State. It's ACC time. Both pack heads into the bulk of their league schedule. Those two shake hands. Ten and three for the Wolf Pack and Paul after today, heading into the opening on Tuesday. Does NC State look like a team that can challenge for a league title? There's no question about it. You get front court play by DJ Funderburk and Manny Bates. It has the guard star power to, I believe, challenge in the ACC. It's a complete team. It's an experienced team. And it's a team with a little bit of chip on their shoulder from last season. Trying to get into the NCAA tournament, something they could not do 
a year ago. This was a fun one in rally fans in high holiday spirits. Our final score, NC State 72, App State 60. Coming up next, the replay of the 2016 Orange Bowl for Paul Biancardi, our entire crew. Will Fleming, so long from Raleigh.